Round two of trying to shed light on the questionable behaviour of an underground horror director. Let's hope this one doesn't get removed too. Once again, sorry for the lack of a proper intro. I'm still catching up, but should be back to normal in the next video. If you enjoy internet mysteries and generally disturbing content, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out. Links will be in the description. Dr. Samuel Lawrence is a renowned psychiatrist and head of the Lawrence Psychiatric Institute, though of course he is a fictional character and that place doesn't exist. The man behind it all is much shadier. Dr. Lawrence is played by Pete Jasselon, a 69-year-old writer, producer, director and editor who makes low-budget horror films and posts clips and trailers for them on YouTube. The character often introduces himself at the start of the videos and explains that the facility is home to quote, some of the most perverse and demented neuropsychopathic individuals to have ever walked, or in some cases, crawled. Before he embarks on a journey to East Afghanistan to study the mating habits of the Wolfensackers, whatever they are, he is documenting some of his most interesting cases. Most of the films centre around killers, whether the clowns or morticians or cannibals, and common themes include strangulation, use of chemicals on a rag and injections to incapacitate victims, who were almost always, if not always, males, and feet. But we'll get back to that. The clips on YouTube are, for the most part, scenes from Pete's generic low-budget horror films, the acting is poor, the cinematography is bog-standard, and there's not much indication of a compelling story. The first few videos I watched weren't too alarming. I noticed there does seem to be a lot of younger actors and a bit of a focus on college students. I've seen plenty of horror movies that centre around young adults of that age, so that fact alone isn't a huge red flag. He claims they're film students, which makes sense. That said, Pete Shaw sure likes having them shirtless. In fact, one of the cover photos on the Lawrence Psychiatric Institute Facebook page shows three of the actors all stood in their underwear. There are also a few uncomfortable scenes from different films where the killer will be caressing the victim's torso. Sometimes the lack of clothes kind of makes sense in the context of the clip. For example, if they're playing a cadaver, but it's not always necessary. The more clips I watched, the more I noticed how many weird foot shots there are. The first couple could have been passed off as an attempt at a unique camera angle, but it often happens multiple times within one clip, and it's certainly not accidental. Characters are barefoot when there's no reason to be, and the camera will zoom in on their feet, or there'll be a shot of someone lying down and the camera will be right in front of their feet, or there'll just be random shots of people wiggling their toes. The focus usually seems to be on the bottom of the feet, though. So at this point, I'm thinking Pete has a foot fetish, or that he's creating films for people that do, and also like horror. Bit of an odd combination, but each to their own. This was all but confirmed when I saw other clips from a channel by the name of Gorilla Thriller, which also appears to be run by Pete or his associates, and has the same name as a series of films he created, or it's the name he gave to the genre of some of his movies, it's not really clear. The videos on this channel are clips from Pete's films though. Some are poorly spliced with clips from music videos, with music that doesn't exactly fit the tone of the clips. Others are compilations that focus on the feet bits, even more so than those on the Dr. Lawrence channel. They often show unconscious men having their socks taken off by their attackers, most of whom are women, after they've been knocked out with a hammer or a cloth over their faces. They're carried off and brought to what looks like a hotel, lined up on the floor with their feet on the bed, and the women will just touch and tickle their feet. Pete's Psycho Sisters movies feature the Soul Sisters, as in Soul of the Foot, who are serial killers that take the socks and shoes off their victims. As someone who hates feet, it made me a bit uncomfortable to watch, but again, each to their own, I guess. That seems to be a somewhat common thing that people are into. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, and although in that context, the use of college-age boys specifically is a little concerning, as long as they're 18 or older, they can star in films that are much worse, so it's not illegal or anything. Problem is, the actors in these films clearly aren't always 18 or older, in fact, I found some videos that feature actual children. I'm really bad at guessing ages, but some look as young as 10, maybe even a bit younger. The first one I saw is titled, A Scene from Mortician Kids, and starts with two young boys who enter a room with a sign saying, Embalming Room. 
They see a body covered in a white sheet. Of course, the feet are hanging out, and there's a deliberate close-up of the feet. They remove the sheet to reveal a young man with another sheet over his groin area. While one of the boys checks the tag on the man's foot, the other looks under the sheet, then tells his friend to do so too, which he does, and his eyes widen. One boy says, I dare you to touch it, and the other replies, I'm not touching that thing, you touch it. The rest of the clip shows the boys connecting some wires to the man to run a current through and he eventually wakes up, basically like a Frankenstein scene. Pete sometimes takes inspiration from other fictional or true stories and events. He has made films loosely based on John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer, among others. Mortician Kids is from a mini web series titled The Search for the Mortician's Apprentice. And I haven't seen any more of the kids episode, only that clip has been posted on YouTube and I would have no desire to buy the rest of it, assuming it hasn't been discontinued like some of Pete's other projects. They're actually pretty expensive too. Each episode was sold separately and this Mortician series apparently used to cost a total of $180. Most of his films are sold as DVDs. It specifies this on some of the listings that they are physical DVDs and not to watch online. You often see comments asking when his projects will be released on DVD, so his small audience seems more interested in having a physical copy than watching online for some reason. I'm guessing they might be older. Not that DVDs are totally dead, but how often is it that you see people requesting them specifically as opposed to a general release date? Anyway, back to Mortician Kids. If I saw that clip first, I'd probably think it was a bit inappropriate, but wouldn't think too much of it. It could be seen as a poor attempt at a funny video. Given the context of all the feet stuff though, and the fact that aspects of Pete's other projects are somewhat sexualized, I get a bad feeling about the involvement of kids in any of it. Interestingly, the comments are turned off for this video, and the number of likes is lower than you'd expect for a video with that number of views, so I imagine it wasn't received very well. The description reveals that the boys were visiting the psychiatric institute and that they're Dr. Lawrence's young nephews. I don't know if they're Pete's nephews in real life, or just some kids he hired. Regardless, it gets much worse. I found clips similar to the feet ones described before, where the men were unconscious, only now it was children. Again, mostly women, but sometimes men, are shown holding cloths over their faces until they pass out, then taking their socks and shoes off. In one, Dr. Lawrence incapacitates a young boy named Zach, using a cloth that he poured some liquid on, and there are multiple close-up shots of Zach's bare feet, even though there's no obvious reason that he wouldn't have shoes on in the first place. Obviously, they're all acting and the kids don't seem noticeably uncomfortable or anything. If these films are what I suspect, the kids in them are probably blissfully unaware. At least I hope so. It's certainly not uncommon for children to appear in horror movies, even though they'd probably be traumatised by watching the end product themselves, but the not safe for work undertones of these movies just makes it look like the kids are being sexualized. Whether or not the kids themselves realise what's going on, it's highly inappropriate to create content like this that so blatantly caters to people. Some of the videos on these channels were deleted by YouTube, so as creepy as the videos that remain are, the full movies must be much worse. If you have any doubt about how these videos are viewed, you only need to check out the comments. Zack is sweet. If he was a girl, I would have loved him. Heart eyes emoji. You see quite a few comments asking for the child actors' full names and social media too. Hi, if you are into male feet, I can send you pics from my feet. Wink emoji. There are many comments like this pointing out the obvious foot themes. People watching these know exactly what they are. There are also comments requesting girl feet and more vulgar ones from people who made it clear that they watched this while they were. I'm sure you can guess what. I've seen people ask if they can have custom videos made of the children too. Is there more chloral in the full version? That brings us to a whole other part of this. There isn't just a focus on feet, but that too. That appears to be the main focus for some viewers. I've even seen a couple of them refer to Pete as Chloro Guy. I didn't even need to Google this. Of course, there are people who enjoy thinking about or actually doing that to someone. It's part of a wider where people enjoy the idea of someone being asleep or unconscious. Obviously, the ramifications of this are huge because the whole thing centres around a lack of consent. There are communities online dedicated to this and they mostly seem to condemn non-consensual acts, but to act this fantasy out, the closest you could get to consent is asking someone in advance. People can and do change their minds all the time, but you can't vocalise that if you're asleep or unconscious in some other way. And of course, when it comes to children, they can't consent at all, so they shouldn't be involved in any of this. 
There's a playlist on YouTube called Chloro One, which compiles over 200 videos of that happening to people. Most are clips from other videos, movies and TV shows. There's everything from kidnapping pranks to scenes from EastEnders, and of course videos from Pete's films, including clips of children. It's clear that this playlist is made for people who have that kind of interest, and it has over 1.5 million views. There's another playlist titled Hot, with a similar number of views and nearly 600 videos of similar content, including clips from Pete's movies with children, as well as other questionable clips of young men and boys getting tied up and or killed. Titles of other questionable playlists that feature Pete's videos include Sleep, Feet, Dead Boys and Guys Dead. I don't think Pete created these playlists, but they show up pretty quickly when searching his Dr. Lawrence character, so I'd be willing to bet he's aware of them at least, and he's certainly aware of the comments left on his own videos, which further confirms my suspicion that if he isn't deliberately creating content out of his own self-interest, he's catering to people that are into that stuff. I suspect he deletes comments on his videos that point out how creepy all this is because they're few and far between, and even on his videos that have thousands of views, there aren't many comments at all. On one of his Facebook posts, he mentioned that he deleted a video on YouTube because, quote, people were freaking out and thought it might be abusive to the boy, even though he was a professional actor and my friend. You should purchase the full version, it's worth it, wink emoji. Little bit weird that he refers to the boy as his friend, even though he's a child and was supposedly hired within a professional context. Anyway, you'd expect to see more comments like that, but instead it's usually creeps that enjoy his content, most of the time making vaguely inappropriate remarks, but even the comments that are more graphic are left up. I decided to look into Pete's past with hopes of shedding some light on his more recent content, and lo and behold, he used to create adult movies. He used the name Todd Russell for those films, though he doesn't seem to be hiding that fact, as it's made clear on IMDb where he wrote his own bio. So he switched from not safe for work content, and some of those themes clearly bled into his work in the horror genre after that, like the aforementioned Psycho Sisters, for which Pete implied he settled on the actresses because they were the only ones willing to expose themselves in the movie. Not particularly uncommon for low-budget horrors, but the introduction of children into his later work that still had inappropriate themes is where it crossed the line. I'm not sure exactly when he started casting children, but there's been a focus on students since around 1998, when his film Dead Students Society was released. According to IMDb, it's about a serial killer and her brother who is, quote, her voyeuristic accomplice. She lures college boys in with her, quote, sensual poetry and flirting, then kills them in a cave. I think we've seen enough to suggest that the content Pete is producing is inappropriate and exploitative. Thankfully, I haven't seen any obvious signs that there's anything even darker going on behind the scenes. I can't say there definitely isn't. He does often reply to comments from people wanting to know or watch more by leaving his email address and telling them to contact him, so I don't know if there's anything more to that. But from what I have seen, I have to assume that Pete hires children, probably telling their parents that they'll be starring in a horror movie, and disguises the fetish stuff as part of the plot. Even then, assuming the parents have seen any of these movies, it's kind of baffling that they wouldn't pick up on that. I don't know if Pete gets enjoyment out of this content himself, or if he's just found a niche genre to profit from, but it's very clear that Pete are watching his films, and he doesn't seem to care. While I'm not accusing him of being a I think his intentions should be brought into question because I fail to see how any of this could be innocent. Unfortunately, there's not much that can be done about his content because it's not actually illegal, at least what we're seeing on YouTube isn't. It seems like he's working on other projects that he doesn't promote as much, so who knows what they consist of. We all know what the Dr. Lawrence related films are though, and who they're for, but it's not actually CP, so Pete can just pass it off as an unusual branch of the horror genre. It's not his fault if people are taking it the wrong way, right? All that said, please don't attempt to contact or harass Pete or anyone else who has any involvement with this. There's nothing to be gained from that, and if anything, it just gives him more justification to try and get this video taken down if he wanted to. I've made my opinion on this situation pretty clear, and I think Pete and his films warrant further investigation, but I don't have any solid evidence to prove that he's done anything wrong or that he has broken the law. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments, plus any other questionable YouTube channels or horror directors you'd like me to cover. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support.
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.